Alright, welcome. I'm Michaela, and I have finally returned. I got mono from drinking after my nephew, and then my computer gave up on itself. So along with the rest of my stuff, I lost six recordings I was going to use. And that really sucked. However, I now have all my stuff backed up on an external hard drive, which should prevent that from happening again. At least the computer part. Today's drawing is of my character Drew. Before I actually start on it, I decided to keep in the warm-ups and little doodles I did to get used to drawing them, because I feel like that's an important part of drawing. It just gets left out of most speed paints. I really like how the one of them playing with the weird little floppy side hair things turned out. Drew is the main character in the webtoon I'm writing. The very basic summary is that as Drew returns home from monitoring the Frost Eagle ceremony, they stumble across three excavators with their horns removed. They note how unusual this is, but they have to report in before they can go and investigate. Excavators are a fictional creature that have the head and proportion of a rabbit, with the body of a bird. Some versions like mine have horns, but are usually poached for their prized pelts. It's mostly fantasy, but there are some sci-fi elements. It's set relatively modern day, but I wanted to add in how magic might affect our technology, so some things are a little bit more advanced. Also, I kind of just wanted an excuse to add robots. The first three episodes are written out, plus a little bit on the fourth, and the first episode has already been rewritten into a script. I plan on writing up to episode 9 and then doing the editing on all of those and then drawing the first 6. After that I will write the next 3 so it's up to 12 and then I will start posting it with the first 3 up all on the first day. Obviously I'm pretty far from there and I'm working a little slowly. However, it's been fun to work on and will be practice for when I eventually do Cassandra and Oliver's story. I have up to episode 7 written for them but I was too worried about making it perfect to get anywhere further. So I decided this would be a better idea. I'm still trying my best with conservation, but it's totally different writing on a story that's not even a year old versus working on an idea that's been around in some form for like five years. Anyway, I have some concept art done for two of the side characters in conservation, and I have decided what the pixies look like and how they work in the story. I'm actually really proud of how unique the pixies are, and I would love to show them off, but I want to wait for the actual comic to reveal them. It's a pain in the butt to be honest, I have no patience. Also, I have noticed I have to physically hold myself back from giving my characters sad dramatic backstories. You'll find out if I succeed uh, eventually when the story comes out. Since I can't really give anything else out or from the story, I guess it's time to start talking about the artwork itself. It's a pretty simple bust shot. When I started the line art, I began with the hair because Drew's front swoopy bit seemed a little bit complicated and I wanted to make sure I got that down right. I do have a separate reference of them, but I cut out when I pulled it up to keep the flow of the drawing better in the speed paint. I also tried out drawing one of the lower lashes as it connects to the eye whites. I can't name names, but I have seen a few artists who do this usually in their art, and I know it was a trend for a little bit, though most of the people who seem to have done it for the trend seem to have dropped off by now, but you can pry it out of my cold little gremlin hands. I will keep it. There are a few aspects of Drew's design that were specifically included because I don't tend to do them. This includes their aforementioned swoopy hair, as well as how their chin is, and their tiny ponytail. Not that you can see it in this drawing, but if you notice in the doodles, they also have some really baggy pants, which is something I also avoid. There's a lot of upsides to using Clip Studio, but one of my favorite parts is how much easier it is to do the thicker outline on the outside of the character. Since I already block out the main shape of the character, all I have to do is go back and create a selection from my line art, expand that, and then delete the extra bits that are inside my blocked out shape. After I do that, I always go back and thicken up the overlapping areas as well so it matches better. It also adds an extra layer of depth to the line art. The coloring portion went by a lot quicker than usual because since I already have Drew's whole color scheme decided, I didn't have to worry about which ones I picked because I already knew. Personally, I think Drew's color scheme goes very well with their personality. Drew's hair may be red, but it's more toned down and natural looking, because even though they are adventurous, they are not a very loud and rambunctious person. The green both ties in the fact that their job has to do with nature, and also just because it looks really nice with their hair. Another reason I picked this specific color scheme is because their hair color also goes great for both their blush and the color of their lips, so it's very cohesive. You can also see that I play around giving Drew freckles a few times. They are not in the original reference, but I do tend to give my characters with red hair freckles. I did eventually decide that they look better without them, but I may play around with it or come back to the idea. Another good thing about Clip Studio Paint is that I found these highlight brushes, 
which you do have to finagle them a little bit, but I do think it works very well for this piece. When it comes to highlights, I do tend to go overboard and then tone it down using the opacity sliders. After that, you can see that I went back and I colored in the line art just on the inside of the character and left the outside edges black. I feel like this makes sure the silhouette pops, but still keeps the softness on the inside of the character. I generally try to stick to a color that's both more saturated and a little bit darker than the shadows. Sometimes I like the look of all of the line art being colored, but I feel like a lot of times it just gets lost. This way I feel like it stands out, but still blends enough. Usually with characters with light skin tones, I use a very bright hot pink to do the lines. However, I didn't really feel like this fit Drew's character or the mood of the piece. I tend to leave the line art for the eyes plain. However, I see a lot of people who do color the line art on the eyes, and it looks really nice, so I did try that out. When I drew this, it had been a little while since I had drawn a character this close up, so it took me some time to remember how I like to shade and texture the hair. Right before this, I had done a bunch of commission pieces, which were all full body, so I didn't really have enough room to do much detailing on the hair. Eventually, I did figure it out, though, and it's honestly the easiest part of the shading for me. I think the only thing that even comes close is probably the shading in the eyes. Finding the correct colors to shade the hair was much more difficult. Thankfully, though, I work in a stupid amount of layers, so it's not that time-consuming to fix. Part of the reason I work with so many layers is that it's easier to literally layer the shadows on top of each other. Afterwards, I do the reflected light onto the hair. I use a blue color for the sky, and then I add in other colors just based on my mood. For some odd reason, this always seems to include a pink, but I have no reasoning behind it. Then it's just a few more minor touch-ups before I move on to the skin. Which to me is the worst part of shading, because if you mess up on the face, it just looks like a completely different person, or it looks like their face is just shaped wrong. Honestly, the shading could have been a lot smoother if I just pulled up a reference to look at while I did it. But I'm lazy. I still think the shading turned out well, it's just that I could have been a lot less frustrated when I was working on it. The highlights on the skin are pretty standard for me, and then I went back and tried to add the same reflected colors in the hair into the skin, so the same blue and pink, and then a yellow in some areas. Another issue I have when working on the face is that because there's so many planes, it can be hard to tell which shadows need to have soft or hard edges. So after I do this, I jump down thinking I'm going to work on the clothes, but I'm still not entirely happy with the face at this point, so then I'll go back in anyway. I felt like the nose and the eye sockets had a lot of dimension that the rest of the face lacked, so I faded with the layer settings and added another pass on the shadows and highlights. On said highlight pass, I did attempt to add some texture into her face, but I do think I wait till later to finish that up. Now I move on to the clothes for real this time. I used a much more red color on it than I did for the shading on anything else because I felt like I was having to finagle it too much with the glue and the purple that I had used before. If something doesn't work out in your drawing, you can always fix it. You don't have to keep going just to make it cohesive. As long as it's not glaringly obvious in the final result, there's no shame in changing up your process midway through the piece. However, I once again used the same colors for the reflected light, which after I do my generic eye shading, I do include in the eye whites as well. It's probably the most amount of colors I've put in the eye whites since I used to just put random dots of colors in there and just hope for the best. That was a kind of weird face. You can see the layers blink for a second because I forgot which layer the eye color is on because 90% of the time I don't name them. I do tend to label them when I'm working on commissions though for some reason. I do some minor details and then I add the shines to the eyes before I move on to finishing up the lips. After I do the shading on them, it does take me a few tries before I get the highlights the way I want them to be. I feel like it's very tricky to get them in the right placement and also have them at the intensity they need to be. Obviously, with the way this is set up, I can't do like a regular background. I do you think it turns out nice? I started off with the same green color as the accents on Drew, and I was surprised at how well the branch turned out. Nature isn't exactly my strong suit when it comes to drawing, so it's definitely something I'll have to practice as it gets closer to when I actually draw out conservation. For the city scenes, I do plan on 3D modeling each of the buildings and then tracing over them for the backgrounds. In fact, I already did the Capitol building which Drew reports into. Also, can you believe after I do some more finishing up details, I do another pass on the face? But that's all I really have to say about this drawing. I now upload on the 1st and 15th of every month, and I already have the next few ready so that way even if I get sick again it won't matter. If you want to keep watching my videos I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribe or a comment for the algorithm. If you really like my art and want me to draw something specific I've got a link to my commissions in the description. But other than that, thanks for watching and farewell!